Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tetsuya Ozaki. I am an editor in the field of art and culture. Nice to meet you. My name is Mariko Asabuki. Uh, this is my very first experience to talk in front of so many uh, audience. I write books. And co I mean, coincidentally, Ms. Asabuki and myself are the double headers. Uh, we belong to the same gallery. Uh, oh, there is an artist called uh, Miyagawa Aiko who belonged to the gallery, same gallery as Mr. Aida. And as you may know, uh, Ms. Miyagawa and Mr. Aida, they belong to the same gallery. However, the style are totally opposite. And I know these two ideas get along with very well, but uh, I feel like I'm in a totally different world. But uh, uh, let's get the session started. First of all, I would like to ask Ms. Asabuki a question. Uh, me, uh, Miyanaga is another artist who belongs to the same gallery and there is another sound and visual artist uh, Mr. Ikeda, Ryoji Ikeda. I know you are fond of Mr. Ikeda and his style is very precise and minimal and very sharp etched and very elegant. And the adjective elegant, can we use this for Mr. Aida's painting? I'm not sure but why do you like Mr. Aida's works? Can you explain? Prior to this session, I asked uh, Ms. Asabuki whether she is interested in Mr. Aida, and she answered yes. So can you tell me why? When I f first looked at uh, Mr. Aida's artwork, was the Yokohama train in Nale in 2001. That's the first encounter with Mr. Aida's works. If the audience laugh or smile at his works, the same response uh, will come back. And sometimes the you know normal, ordinary statement uh, would be interpreted in the ironic way through the Mr. Ida's artwork. I uh, love Edo Kabuki, and that's what I specialized in my university. Keizai Se Eisen is my favorite from Ukiyo-e world, and when I enjoyed his ukiyo-e paintings, I feel like human beings have a strong desire uh, to eat, to rape, or to have a sexual intercourse with the other human beings, and I totally agree with that kind of perspective. So when it comes to ukiyo-e kabuki, you know, I feel feel that kind of uh, nature of the human beings and some, I mean, the, the, the age where we live in and is so different from the ukiyo painting era, but I feel the same attraction from Mr. Aida's work and Ash Color Mountain we just looked at and also the picture of the air raid on New York City. Of course, those artworks can be interpreted in the social or political manner, but uh, oh, can you uh, show the slides? Thank you. Well, it's like a notebook for music, uh, for novels. The storyline is said to be very important, but the storyline is there uh, for readers. In the case of literature, we tend to pay more attention to the human natures. I believe there is a storyline 
for human actions. I like uh, the Shinjuku Castle, uh, Mr. Aida's work. And I like his video artworks of a man who called himself Bin Laden. The Bin Laden who escaped to Japan and got drunk. The video of a man calling himself Bin Laden staying in Japan. I like this artwork. And I like the other work uh, referring to Kenjiro Okazaki. Uh, there is a very uh, talented artist, Keijiro Okazaki, and he has this kind of style. And his uh, artwork's title uh, is quite lengthy in most of the times. And as you can see, uh, this has a very long title as well. And there is a critique, uh, Mr. Asada. And Mr. Asada and Mr. Okazaki uh, are very close friends and inspired by uh, the work of Okazaki, Mr. Aida uh, created uh, this painting and I understand many people look at this as a critical art piece Um, but sometimes it's a fine balance between the political statement and the other artistic statement. If you can remember the Hokusai painting, if you are to link the Hokusai painting with the political uh, statement, it's quite boring. And in a case of a novel, there is a storyline for the human actions. So for the sake of the artwork, so for the sake of the paintings, there are some underlining episode. I think there is a very interesting gap. Well, I need to give the audience the footnote. Karikori Sento Yamari Ken is another artwork, or actually essay, produced by Mr. Aida two weeks ago. And this is the essay. And he was explaining why he painted this art and uh, Mr. Aida was saying that I'm not you know uh, giving critical view into the Mr. Okazaki or Mr. Asada style but dot 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 that's the description made by Mr. Aida and Heisei Kanjin project this title is very interesting and this title sounded very right from my own experience uh, from my viewpoint Kanjin the term itself existed from many years ago Kanjin is about soliciting a contribution for the pious uh, purposes, uh, but uh, in Edo era, in the medieval uh, time, there were some uh, fraud going on. You know, you know, Kanjin project is not about fraud, but uh, in Edo era, there is a uh, there is my favorite kabuki work, Hokai Bo. And Mr. Kanzaburo Nakamura uh, normally performs uh, this recently. And Mr. Aida uh, was saying that uh, let's assume there is a bigger uh, monk uh, begging for money, raping uh, ladies, and and just doing any fraudulent activities and at the end of the day this fraudulent priest or monk uh, got killed. So that's the storyline of this favorite Kabuki and he dressed so badly and then this priest or monk says so many things. Um, non-true story but uh, his story for some reason can attract the attention of the uh, audience or the public and I feel the same toward uh, the Mr. Aida's artworks.
福あるんじゃないのかなと思います。前田さんあの Well, Bin Laden, also in the work of、uh, Ms. Aida, you also、uh, have disguised as、uh, Prime Minister、uh, uh, Abe and、uh, Cindy Sherman.、Uh, maybe I don't know this is the right depiction, but、uh, is any other way that you depicted and personalized someone? Maybe、uh, Ms. Asabuki, your idea would uh, uh, trigger Mr. Aida to w- work on a new art s- site,、uh, artwork. So, Ms. Uh, Mr. Aida, you mentioned himself and、uh, depicted himself、uh, erotic and grotesque. Well, putting aside these t y p e of works,、uh, featuring on high school girls or salary men and erotic and grotesque, for women's uh, perspective, uh, there, you may not be able to accept it as it is. Uh, well, I like、uh, Namboku, and、uh, that the artist is、uh, erotic,、uh, grotesque nonsense. And on the same day, on the wedding day,、uh, also there is a uh, uh, big coffin that she also does、uh, prepare. And、uh, in Tokaido's story,、uh, some of the intestines、uh, that are being the harakiri, the, the girls a s harakiri. When I was a high school student, I have seen his work, the harakiri girls. So, I don't know, is there a.、Um, okay, I need some microphone. Okay, yes, my microphone is working. And、uh, the, the Venus in Italy, the beautiful woman is、uh, sleeping, and inside all the intestines are being shown as part of the artwork, and those kind of things. It's、um, humans, sort of a. It's、uh, of course、uh, not consistent, it's、uh, disorderly. And、uh, we try to align ourselves to the orderly、uh, manner of the society. But inside us, what inherits us is、uh, something that we like to steal and kill and、uh, maybe rape.、Uh, there, so there's two parts of the dark side and the bright side, orderly and disorderly. So, Ms.、Uh, Sabuki, that is the area which, why you are attracted to Mr. Ida's work. Well, Mr. Ida's work, listening to what you said, you r e Reminds me,、uh, there was a drawing called For Good or For Worth, Everyone Has Grown,、uh, every, Grown Hairs. And I think this is going to be featured in the exhibition. Okay, this is going to be. So, okay, so, Ms. Sabuki, your interest in reading your books and essays,、uh, the world that we live in and the life that we have, is all、uh, in cycle. Uh, when you have、uh, Yuseki, is after the track of after being washed away, which you have won the Accolade of Domago Award. That is the area of your interest, looking into the person's insights. Well, one person with one intent and will to live with that intent. I have a big question to that, like movies. I cannot even watch movies because the reason is that same people always sustain to be the same character. I don't know why. Meaning that the juicer, the mixers, the blender, excuse me, looking at it, this is more human. It's the individuality or mankind is as just as it is. Looking at the blender, looking at it, I'm relieved、uh, in a way. I'm very much relieved looking at it. An exhalient. So it's a very detailed. You, he mentioned himself as an artisan and craftsman.、Uh, but the, the looking into, I, it, it recalled me of Saikaku, and、uh, that was the older work, the criticism of the artist. It's、uh, quite a, a peculiar story,、uh, but that's、uh, something that is.、Uh, Have a strong objection to the society. And Saikaku is very correct in depicting the person of what they wear as a kimono. There's no inside to men, but depending on what they wear as kimono,、uh, when it's being shown on the surface, the, the feeling of the characters are only reflected in the kimono that they wear. So, that in itself, the meticulous touch and details. Is something not only what's inside, but the detailed work of what's inherent is、uh, something that is very interesting. Yes, and the skills. Well, Mr. Eider,、uh, come to think of it, in his、uh, teens, 
Mishima Yuki, Yuki Mishima, an author, was the most influential person for you uh, because um, Mishima also advocated the fact that mankind are only being shown by how they look outside and not inside. How they present themselves is all what they have to uh, give. So now I'm, time is running out, but the three speakers, I have one question for each person will have one question to Mr. Aida, and I have asked them to come up with one question to Mr. Aida. And after that, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Aida to join in and to have a uh, round session. So, Mr. Sabaki, what would be your question to Mr. Aida? I don't know. This uh, is going to be real video for the first time, but uh, Mr. Sabaki, what's your question? Well, writing a novel, when I start writing, it uh, starts naturally, but normally I don't know when I could finish my work. Finishing the novel, what does it mean to finish a work? So in other words, like the uh, picture of a waterfall, uh, you, when you were working on that uh, artwork uh, in Osaka uh, at the National yes, Modern Museum, yes, and the DVD of the Mukidoku Taileku, the continent of non-movement, uh, that for the, you mentioned that you weren't able to finish the work for, for the due time for the exhibition. And the work in itself, it's incomplete. But at the same time, the time of when you are going to leave or put the brush down, you do not know. So there's ending in two cents. So, Mr. Haino, I was wondering when you conclude your work, well, when you put the paint down, the brush down. Oh, I see. It's very traditional. The moment in which you declare yourself as the work being finished, putting down your brush. So, for an individual, this is all different. So, I wanted to ask this question to Mr. Ida. Okay. So, this is for you to think about. Now, Mr. Sabuki, thank you very much for your contribution. We'd like to name, now move on to the next speaker. Ms. Sabuki, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts. Okay, Ms. Sabuki, thank you very much. Now I would like to invite the second guest, uh, Shinzan San. Ms. Shinzan, please do come up. So uh, it is your turn. Uh, Ms. Shinzan, please do come up. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, Ms. Nameko Shinzan, you may know. She writes manga and essays, and on the other hand, uh, Emi Ikematsu is her name, uh, participating in the world of art. Uh, many of your work are now under your uh, Nameko Shinzan name, and it seems as though the boundary has become very big for you being an artist and author. Uh, well, Emi Ikematsu, as an artist, I have had a chance to see your solo exhibition uh, highlighting your artist side of your work. And Ms. Shinsan, I would like to ask you a question when you encountered Mr. Aida. Well, I think when I was a student, still a student, at that time, I, uh, Nakazawa Hideki, Hideki Nakazawa, who was a modern artist, I was uh, taking a part-time job, and due to this relationship, I had had the chance to look at uh, Mr. Aida's exhibition. And at that time, uh, there was a uh, novel which uh, was written at that time, uh, The Juvenile Youth and also Abnormality. And um, working on this, I was st strongly struck by his work. And every time there's an exhibition, I always uh, visit his exhibition. So the first encounter uh, at uh, Hideki Nakazawa, you mentioned, uh, so you graduated from the Art Institute? Yes, I was still a, a student at the Art University. Okay, so uh, she's graduated from the Art University, yes. At that time, Mr. Aida, the impression that he shared on me is that I was a kind of a person sh who should not get involved with. What does that mean? Mr. I was quite, it was shocking for me to learn that uh, Mr. Ida felt that that was a person or characteristic should, who should I not, who should, he should not get involved. Well, I did not ask a probe the reason why he thought so, but he was coming up with a picture book called Unhappy uh, Girls Picture Book. And I liked his work, and Unhappy um, School Girls Picture Book. And um, I wanted to be a model. I was quite aggressive in taking part in his artwork, but 
uh, this aesthetic sense of uh, Mr. Ida, I was uh, below his threshold, so benchmark. Uh, so I was not a, unable to work for him. Well, wow, really, that's not really nice. But um, uh, in terms of the basis of your work, the young adolescents and abnormality, the work that you were written on. So you did not like Mr. Ida. No, I did had not have any negative impression on him, but Mr. Ida, I was given 15 minutes to talk about the relationship with Mr. Ida and um, the attractiveness of uh, Mr. Ida. I summarized, uh, oh really, it's very simple. So I'd like to share this with you, my impression and attractiveness of uh, Ida. Well, Ida has bipolarized character as an artist. Uh, very serious, but very abnormal. Uh, very nice looking, but uh, not really good. So S and M, there is a pole shift of into switching of S, S uh, and M. Uh, depending on how you look at it, it always changes. He is a genius and talented, but he starts to work on a primitive material such as corrugated guard ball. Uh, so this is a pole shift of how what he has. So since he is so sophisticated at the same time, on sophisticated. He was dressed and disguised as a woman and he was wearing an L logo swimsuit and it was such a mismatch. It was so attractive. He's so serious. That's the reason why he's so abnormal. But maybe that is reflective of the fact that he was brought up by a teacher parents and there are so much of a majestic feeling of attractiveness depending on the difference and the scope of work that he offers. So he's abnormality as a work but he does not lead to his actual execution or implementation of that. So he's a gentleman and he's a moralist. So being writing this essay of adolescence and abnormality, I thought that this really depict where he is. But looking at the picture of waterfall, my impression was changed. It is a very uh, peaceful way of girls in sweet smooth uh, and the waterfall, which is so attractive in the mismatch. At Osaka Museum, he was producing this and working on this in a public uh, working progress uh, demonstration. So having this uh, good moral uh, citizens of Osaka looking at uh, how this work is going to be finished, uh, unless you are uh, a masochist, you will not be able to complete your work in that manner. Inclusive of the progress of the work that has been finished is such a, a big difference. And also beautiful words uh, who are in seppuku and who has intestine or maybe beautiful g girls who has uh, this uh, li limbs are being cut off. Uh, the features of how they feel is no. And they are really is the embodiment of your spirit. And the fact that you are writing these girls with having your feeling and spirits being embedded in these work. I have a great uh, sort of influence in terms of how it is being written. And the dopamine and of course the, the complex of how we bring about into your hormones uh, really does stimulate uh, how you be able to view the world. So the criticism uh, of the intellectuals uh, always are uh, being spiked by looking at his work. This uh, he's a charismatic art artist, and you can be gain a lot of requests. But the reason why you go wrong with young artists, you open a bar, uh, bar, and also you have a family family, which is so normal. And this is an antithesis to the art world of what we have seen. So in terms of the lifestyle and arts that coincides, which has spanned so differently, I would like to support my fullest in terms of how you do your work. So thank you very much. Ms. Kataoka, we should keep uh, what he, she just said in the record. Um, that was a beautiful interpretation of Mr. Aida. That's amazing, and maybe I should conclude the session now. But as I listen to what she just said, I feel like I don't need to raise any questions anymore to you regarding Mr. Aida. But I ask the same question to Ms. Asabuki from a women's viewpoint. I mean, I'm not sure if you are the typical uh, women, or, uh, but uh, from the women's 
perspective. I mean, many years ago in Nakameguro Mizuno Art Gallery, Mr. Aida had the exhibition, and he talked uh, to Ms. Yanagi, and there are uh, several feminist audience in that session, and they kind of interrogated uh, Mr. Aida and Mr. Aida. started uh, being kind of lost and had a difficult time answering to their question but I think Ms. Shin-san you have a broader view of you know you I guess have a normal view just like the normal audience and then you also have a feminist perspective as well so can you tell me how you perceive Mr. Aida's work. I like the manga art of Mr. Suehiro. So if it's an artistic expression, I think it's okay for him to paint a beautiful women in whatever manner. But it is true that some feminist, you know, people uh, will make a fuss uh, or a l make a lot of, you know, critics about Mr. Ida's work. And then there is another question I would like to ask Ms. Shinsan. I mean, due to what you do at this moment, you pay a lot of attention to the social mainstream, social phenomena, social interest. I understand you go for an interview by yourself and you write about those phenomena and you are very sensitive to that kind of social trend just like Mr. Aida what do you think do you feel like you are covering the same theme as Mr. Aida let's clean the town um, Mr. Aida produced a poster format of painting on that theme and I thought I could do the same. So does that mean that you are inspired by the Mr. Ida's work? No, I thought I kind of shared the same perspective as Mr. Ida on this particular topic. Even before I was exposed to that particular poster artwork of Mr. Ida. I always enjoy watching Mr. Ida's works. As a person who expresses herself, what is the commonality and differences between yourself and Mr. Ida? Well, his ability to paint what he perceives. I can't do that. You know, the, the painting of Blender, painting of beautiful women's, and at the same time, I mean, he, he is so meticulous and he's precise in drawing a picture of beautiful women. However, when it comes to the salary man, he's not that uh, precise. He, he doesn't write the details of the salary man. I, I think he's more interested in beautiful, you know, girls rather than middle-aged guys or old people and the same applies to me so when I draw the illustration of a beautiful woman I find myself uh, more uh, diligent and thorough but uh, when it comes to drawing the old aged you know man I'm not that interested as a manga artist, how do you perceive the style of Mr. Aida's work? I feel it's quite dynamic. I think he uses pencils, right? Uh, yes, there are some art pieces done by pencils. I think he's very agile and very reactive. Your word choice is brilliant. Thank you. I think time is up, so uh, let me... Uh, can you give Mr. Aida a question?
Mr. Aida uh, drew the classical, beautiful woman, and I wonder what's his favorite actress or celebrity or idol. Uh, so who is his favorite actress and idols or celebrities? Uh, when he was a teenager, he loved Kumiko Oba. According to Mr. Uh, Ida, it's like a girl next door. It's a typical girl next door. And that's how he started the life as an artist. But uh, what is his favorite actress and idols and celebrities? Thank you very much, Ms. Shin-san. Thank you very much, Ms. Shin-san. The third guest speaker is Mr. Kokubo. Please, Mr. Kokubo, proceed to the podium. Uh, Mr. Kokubo, nice to meet you. Mr. Kokubo doesn't seem to fit in this venue. But uh, through the Mori Art Museum, I mean, we have uh, the core art fans. And through the Academy Hills, uh, you know, they're, I mean, they also made the announcement of this event. So they invited the people who normally are not exposed to the arts that often, but uh, show some interest in Mr. Aida. I understand that Mr. Kokubo gave lecture uh, in Academy Hills before. Uh, yes, back then I gave lecture on my uh, work as an astronomer. And I talked to Jim Bom artist unit, junior colleague of Mr. Aida. So Mr. Aida is like an old, older brother of Jim Bon. It's a very provocative artist team. Uh, two months after the Fukushima reactor incident uh, in Shibuya, just at the edge of the artistic statue, they added the painting to indicate uh, what happened in Fukushima uh, nuclear reactor. Uh, Jim Bon uh, has deep interest into space, and so that's how I got to know them. And as I talked to this artist team, we started talking about Mr. Aida. And since I am an astronomer, uh, they thought that I don't know Mr. Aida. But actually, I like uh, Mr. Aida's work, and I have his works. You ha have co-written the book of Map of Stars. And in this book, you explained about the powers of 10. And he used the CG to explain about the scientific uh, space story in a romantic manner. And uh, this seems to be totally irrelevant to Mr. Uh, Ida. But uh, I know you are fond of Mr. Makoto Aida. Doesn't that damage your career as an astronomer? No. Most of my colleagues do not know about Mr. Aida. I use left brain uh, for astronomy, because astronomy is all about a theory and logics. But I also use my bra right brain, inspired by you know watching the paintings, being inspired the by those paintings, and I like uh, Buddhist statues, and I like old ancient Japanese styles artworks, but I couldn't really, you know, understand what they meant, because when I looked at them, I feel exhilarated for some reason, but I'm sure 
you know, I have to have good understanding of the social background or cultural context from where the artwork was born. But that kind of background, you know, references is not needed uh, for me to enjoy Mr. Aida's work. I do love the giant f member Fuji versus King Kidura. I watched this when I was a student. So it lingered on my mind, and when I ever heard Aida's name, always this comes onto my mind. It's quite uh, astonishing, striking. Yes, it is striking, yes, indeed. And uh, this is uh, other museums. Uh, there are other, other artists' work, but this is the only work that I still remain. And always is linger on my mind. Was it for good, for whether for bad? Well, I'm man, and uh, these uh, visuals or uh, it, it really struck me as uh, something that is impactful. In the same location, I think it was a venue. I don't recall it precisely, but it was Mutant Hanako. I get to see Mutant Hanako. This is the work. It's a manga. Yes, it's a manga. Mutant Hanako, and. Uh, in a nutshell, it is a uh, beautiful girl's uh, featured work. And many of you, I hope, have read this manga. It's a quite a great artwork, surprising artwork. Because at that time, it's a, a brute and savage. It's a World War II, and Japan was uh, losing the war. And there is a young couple. and. A boy is going to be flying as yes, a uh, pilot plane flyer, and the girls uh, uh, would help. Uh, it is the Himeyuri story that there is a two uh, sisters, and the old sister will save the young sister from being raped. And um, it was abducted, and the General MacArthur is going to rape this girl. And, uh, well, I just am scratching his head. But she's going to be raped anyway. But in any case, there is a revenge, a big story of revenge. So I don't know if this uh, is, uh, could, should be talked on, but this is what is shown here is really the highlight of the story, actually, as a manga. Uh, so it's the savage and erotic and grotesque and uh, very right-wing relative to w the war influence. But I don't know why, but um, there was a time when I was really intrigued uh, with these elements. In Mutant Hanako, when it started, and there's Kenpei-kun, uh, and there's a lot of other, uh, again, savage, brutal related uh, comic uh, that was released as a series, and I looked into all his uh, comics. But this uh, Mutant Hanako had a strong uh, influence. Every time I move my house, I throw away. But Hanako always uh, is with me, moved with me. Uh, I could not throw away this Hanako comic book. And at that time, it was uh, left me with a very striking image. And even still yet today, I know many of uh, Ida's work. But um, always, uh, the giant Fuji and Hanako, mutant Hanako, always appears on my mind. So it's erotic. It's uh, gr grotesque. But uh, the two uh, speakers uh, have talked about uh, Mr. Ida's work, and they all accepted his work. So that's a surprising uh, part of me being a male. So even females, women, uh, also can accept uh, his work. is something that is also another surprise for me. Well, Mr. Kokubo, you're uh, the astronomer and uh, you're a scientist, and there's a lot of romanticism around, uh, of course, uh, astronomy, and also you are uh, into scuba diving, right? Uh, very fresh-looking uh, gentleman and far from being grotesque. Well, this is not what I intend to appeal. In I like ocean, I like seas, and that's also one part of me. But also I'm interested in humans. And in the human, uh, I don't know about grotesque, but erot erotic uh, features, there's always uh, in the minds or in the hearts of people. And looking at Ida's work, and I have read uh, many of his uh, work, uh, uh, in terms of Karikori Sentoya is uh, the name of his uh, work. And there's uh, many works that is embodying his thoughts about women, young girls. 
and they are very cute. And uh, it uh, suits my preference uh, in terms of the, the preference of my, the woman that I like. And um, without uh, being looking, trying to be cool or aesthetic, it's really as it is. It being a layman like myself, not knowing too much about the modern art and not knowing about the background and rational associated with it, instantaneously it really strikes me as um, very, very impressive. So, Mr. Kokubo, what you have written is that while you were intrigued with stars and space and astrology is that, astronomy is that, you have worked that into three documents. In other words, where we are, this is a structure of space uh, leading to Buddhism, and who are we, who we are. This is uh, about the, the genesis of mankind and living creatures. And last is, uh, are we alone? Uh, so this is existence of extraterrestrial uh, living beings. If you like art, this is instantaneous in Paul Gorgon. Uh, there is a work that is relevant with this title. Where do we come from? What we are we? And where we are heading towards? So I think this is a title of the Gorgon's work. And this is art and space, the interest towards art and space, they are relevance. Is that true? Well, normally, as a researcher, I research not only moon, but planet, and how this whole space uh, has been uh, generalized, uh, has been born. Uh, and uh, when we see the planet, and we see evolution, and we see mankind evolving and creating a society, and then we have to exp exp explicitly express ourselves. So it's natural science, but ultimately it's linked to human mankind. So if it proves to be successful, I would like to understand and embrace the whole. So ultimately it's human mankind and our society and the relationship within the community. If it's embedded, there's no borderline. So it's continuation uh, of our, my research. Looking at Ida's work, it's um, erotic and grotesque. That, that is uh, something that is embedded in the ma minds of people or mankind. So that is uh, put right out in front. So that's really refreshing, and really I like it, and I cannot forget it. So in um, Mr. Kokubo's, uh, your thesis, Mutant Hanako may be uh, referenced in your thesis. Well, in our industry or in our world, it's not well known, so I need to uh, let him no, wider. Uh, maybe through the uh, Mori Art Museum's exhibition, you should invite your peers and colleagues, and you should write an article in the magazine Nature, maybe. OK. I'll think about it, yes. So in any case, uh, Mr. Kokuba, the attractiveness of uh, Mr. Aida is, uh, is really the essence of uh, people or mankind. It leads to the space and astronomical uh, world. Well, I think, to be frank, it's just an instantaneous sort of a reaction, oh, this is great, I like it. It's just looking at it, it strikes you with I like it, not knowing who's the writer, who's the artist, and not knowing Mr. Aida himself. It's good, and I have a refreshing feeling about it. And that, I think, is the attractiveness of uh, Aida's work. In contemporary work, there are many kinds of works, so like uh, the abstract painting, in a way. You, you, it doesn't strike you as, uh, no, it doesn't s stick to my uh, mind, no. It's uh, maybe because I do not know, I'm a layman, too a layman, not knowing the details of modern art, but society, and uh, transcending society, transcending uh, the rational behind it, there are some instant feeling which you like and which you don't like. Art is the world of whether you like or without, you don't like. Uh, when you look at it, you like, or maybe you don't like. So that, I think, is the most important essence of being exposed to art. So to that sense, Ida's work, I like very much. So from a scientist, the state-of-the-art scientist, uh, you said you like, and uh, Ida's work is uh, good. So uh, it was a good uh, underlining feature of uh, Mr. Ida's work. So thank you very much for your uh, time and your question. Well, Ms. Shinsan's question, it really does overlap with Ms. Shinsan's question. Oh, I see. I give a second thought. In Ida's work, what I like about Ida's work is that the beautiful young girls and looking at the essays, what surprised me is the dialogues, uh, 
girls women's day and uh, sometimes you decide to only look at high school girls on high school days on a Dio Hawks uh, baseball uh, game. So it's a very important themes of uh, high school girls. Of course, not beautiful boys, so of course, so that's irrelevant. But why is it beautiful girls, young girls? Not mature women, but beautiful girls. Why featuring beautiful young girls? Many, many features on young, beautiful young girls. Why? I wanted to ask this question. Okay, very difficult uh, question maybe, uh, Mr. Ida, for you, but why? As a motif, many young girls. Why is it girls, not boys? Okay, that was the question. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I would like to resume the session. In this part, well, now we have received questions from the three guest speakers, so I would like to raise the three questions to Mr. Aida. So, to start with, let me ask this to Mr. Aida. Mori Art Museum solo exhibition of Mr. Makoto Aida. Uh, when I first came to notice, I was amazed. In 2001, at the Yokohama Triennale, uh, Mr. Aida's work were exhibited, and it turned out to be very provocative. And it's even since then, due to his art style, his art raised a lot of arguments and discussion. And in this industry, he was referred to as difficult to handle artist. And in Tokyo or Japan's art scene, Mori Art Museum is considered as one of the top museum. And this Mori Art Museum is now about to hold a solo exhibition of Mr. Aida. I think it's a very courageous thing to do. And for you, Mr. Aida, when you are to hold your solo exhibition, how do you see uh, this? I am going to prepare a small room which prohibits the enter of the minors whose age is under 18. And I'm going to uh, put, for example, uh, King Ghidorah work and the other like uh, sexually erotic or a little uh, provocative artworks in this room. I wrote, uh, when I was right, uh, drawing Mutant Hanako comic book, I was not praised by other people at all. I think Kokubo-san is the only supporter back then. Uh, in I was interviewed by the magazine of like uh, erotic and uh, grotesque style. For example, I was interviewed by Hyakuro Murasaki, and I was treated as a brutal kind of uh, artist. But as I, you know continued working as an artist, I came to think I would like to show more of my arts in the gallery space. And when I look back my recent works, for example, uh, Seppuku Harakiri School Girls and the other following erotic uh, paintings, I feel like uh, my artworks came to be accepted because I didn't uh, draw nipple or I didn't draw pubic hair. I, I just drew the uh, int intestines and internal organs and overalls and that was accepted uh, no, not by the museum and the gallery. And it's not illegal against the criminal law, Article 189. I mean, this style is still brutal, but uh, 
you know, I kind of find a way to somehow go between uh, the articles of this criminal law and um, for this small room uh, with the restriction uh, for the under the age of 18, you know, I thought I could exhibit uh, erotic and a grotesque kind of uh, artworks uh, which can still be accepted to be accommodated in this kind of public gallery and the museum circumstances. Uh, can you answer to Mr. Kokubo's question first? Why are you drawing beautiful girls, not beautiful boys? Why beautiful girls? Well, let me think. Uh, Kokubo-san, do you have any other additional comments? I think it's uh, more about your preference. I think you like beautiful girls. That's why you paint. Well, I thought I, I, thought I knew how I could answer to this question, but uh, I think there are eight ways of answering to this question. From artistic point of view, uh, this doesn't apply to all the art works, but uh, for example, Harakiri schoolgirls. It's a critical observation of the Japanese society. You know, girls stand out in the current Japanese society for some reason in comparison with the other countries. I think this kind of phenomena became prominent since 1980s. If you look at the posters in the street, you see the motif or theme of girls quite often times. And since the end of World War II, uh, many things happened to the Japanese society. Uh, Self-defense forces existence have something to do with this. Uh, so I kind of included that kind of critical observation. So that's one reason out of eight. S sorry, can I come back to this question later on? I, I kind of forgot what I was about to answer. Next to Ms. Shin-san's question, what is your favorite who is your favorite idol and uh, celebrity or actress? If I was to answer to that question seriously, the older I become, the more difficult to answer to this kind of question because I change. 99% uh, of that reason is because I change. And remaining 1% is due to the change on the side of actresses and idols. I think it has something to do with the individuality or personality of the celebrities and actresses. When you become a middle-aged man like myself, it's like uh, Tanizaki or Kawabata in their late days. I am old, getting old, girls are some kind of aspirational existence who is sitting on the opposite side of, of myself. You know, I don't care about their personality, their characteristics. I don't see, watch TV anymore, but if I see girls in a TV commercial. I sometimes find them pretty, but I don't remember the names of those. So Yu Aoi, when uh, she uh, became to be featured by the TV industry, I thought she is pretty and cute. And uh, I don't hardly go back home, but uh, when I watched the NHK's morning TV drama, Carnation, I thought the heroine, the main character of this TV program, uh, can survive in this industry for a long time. I l love all the girls, not particular girls. 
I became a philanthropic. So you look at the group of girls, right? Instead of looking into the individual girl. No, uh, that's correct. I don't think it, I don't think that much, but that that's why I call myself genius. When I was younger, I paid more attention to dogs and animals, and now as I get older, I you know am interested in girls and women. And in the picture of waterfall, uh, in the swimming suit uh, which girls wear, you know. It says the name of the girls. Having their name on their swimming suit or bathing suit is so non-fashionable. And the design of the school swimming suit is not cool at all. And then, and then they have their names on, on top and it's helpless they they had to have their name on on their swimming suit so this is uh, midorikawa because of the takamine is at the height of the waterfall so the japanese names that they wear on the swimsuits are relative to water and uh, you like midorikawa the most because it's at the top of the waterfall well it's been fortunate that i don't have a decisive uh I'm not a decisive person. So there are a lot of picture materials that I collect on and okay, I start working on the picture and it doesn't end up like the picture is a girl. It doesn't look alike. So it's a fabricated or it's a uh, virtual woman and based on the model, it's uh, coincidental to come up with a, the actual finalized woman, a girl. And uh, coincidentally, uh, there are some uh, girls who, who is my preference and who is not my preference, but I don't pick out which is my preference, but there are, of course. Um, uh, you mentioned about a beautiful young woman's uh, body with a unfashionable school swimming suit. This is a uh, high school uh, girls. Uh, it's uh, ambiguous, but th it's a third uh, grade uh, junior high school. Uh, maybe the most old, mature looking is uh, a woman of third grade junior high school who's more mature. So in, uh, Ms. Strida, in terms of women, uh, in gender, let's say, in sex, women, the most beautiful uh, body of a woman is uh, the age group of between junior high school to high school. Is that your belief? Uh, I would say yes to that, maybe yes. Yes. This is also a uh, frequent asked questions. But as you say, or as uh, Mr. Nanjo has said, depicted, my personal life. I have a fa family and uh, very rare, rare to be so normal and having a normal family life. And um, having communication with a family, uh, maybe better to go out with a woman who is in their 30s uh, to go out and have a discussion, communicate with. Yes, uh, she, she's so young. Uh, she, I, I make, she makes me really nervous. Uh, but maybe with uh, Shinzo-san, uh, I'm more relaxing in a way. But uh, So let's come back. Okay. So my personal life and the real gender, real sex, why I have to depict it in form of a artwork is somewhat is uh, truncated or disconnected. It's um, something that is without reality. It's a superficial. I like something that is superficial, especially young girls and women from far distance. It's a good subject to watch from far distance with ambiguity. So why I'm depicting a lot of young women? This is one of the answer to that question. But the superficiality, young girls, is in the adolescent and they have a lot of complex uh, feelings inside for girls of that age it's a very hard uh, time for them to grow but for a uh, old man like me excluding the complexity of what's in the minds of this adolescent young women uh, the w men women uh, female hormone and men hormone it's uh, really uh, it's 
contracting and uh, a lead uh, in the women's hormone. So the physical, maybe feature of the face inclusive, uh, so-called hard to describe, but uh, the ero erotic, uh, the very first step of being erotic. It's the sort of sequential of uh, temporal time uh, of how we see they grow. And young boys, uh, as uh, you asked the question earlier, young boys, probably, I don't know, this is a, not something that sh you should uh, share in public, but I like young boys, I must say. At the same time, I have um, motherhood in my mind, or it's a... Uh, uh, I like uh, young boys who is really refreshing. Uh, young boys, it's good, but uh, uh, maternal love maybe is in my mind. So something is protective of me and guarding me to have that part of me flourish. So it really is a uh, displacement. That's something that's far aside from my personal, of course, uh, livelihood in your work. You talked about not writing pubic hair. So the fantasy of young girls, the hair part, is not beautiful in aesthetics. That, that is the reason why you don't write pubic hair. Yes, hair, whether I like hair or not, let's say I'm not an artist. As a living man, I like hair, yes. Let's pretend I'm ignorant. Well, in young people, some people prefer to sort of shave their hair, but that's really regrettable, I must say. In China, when I was in China, young women in China uh, did not shave uh, their uh, hair underarm. And uh, that's our armpit. That's wonderful, isn't it? A lot of, uh, of course, capitalism, but that needs to be protected, not to shave the underarms. Well, if you uh, are over 18 years old of age in China, they would shave uh, their uh, armpit hair, but uh, still under age of 18, they have our uh, hairs. Uh, uh, armpit hair. In Japan, it was like that. And okay, so these girls, uh, they have no um, armpit hair, but uh, well, I won't write it in my artwork, no. And the new work that I'm working on, I'm having a lot of hardships in finishing my work, but uh, it's a young girl in nude. It's like a Rika-chan doll in terms of the texture of the skin and complex. I wanted to uh, sort of shift that towards that dollish image so they have no nipples or anything of that kind. But yes, okay, this really is a uh, practice of uh, finalizing the large work. My, it's rather than being my personal preference, it's really is a step forward in finishing my large piece work. So that is the reason. And there was a Sabuki-san's question, before going to Mr. Sabuki's question, in the flow of this discussion, Ms. Raida, you have mangas and non-manga works, both. And is there a boundary? Is a clear boundary between the manga and non -manga? Well, Mutant Hanako, if it's Mutant Hanako. It's a manga, and this is a painting. It's different, but it's a so drawing that sits in between these two boundaries. Yes, I have those works that sits in between both damn boundaries. True. So as I've been reiterating, paintings. I'm not a good painter. I'm not good. Meaning that calligraphy. Like I have few sort of a rating in calligraphy or normally those people who are high ranked in calligraphy world, they are not good in normal writing. It's like that. So like sculptural design, I did work when I'm in my university years. If I see a model, I can see the shade and light and I will be trying to write. Like Akira Yamaguchi, without seeing anything and writing, and uh, in competition uh, of the, the sophistication of work, I don't have that kind of talent uh, like him. It's uh, really a trash. But 
but to show as it is is the the, the Minato Isho cities. Uh, and Dimitri and Hanako, there is uh, war planes and tanks. But uh, of course, uh, the old Japanese military regimes, old tanks, you can depict them by searching on the web. But it, it, I don't do that. This may be the zero fighter plane. This, I think, it would be what we look like. So it's from my mind. I have not searched of how it actually looked like. So if possible, the Minato Isho cities, all with the You Together series, it's a uh, half manga or it's like a Zen comic or literature comic in Japan art. It's a free, freehand sort of artwork. And uh, that is one of the uh, oriental artwork. And um, in terms of Japan old, art tradition, art history, uh, like the ink, Chinese uh, ink painting, broad and shallow. At one point in time, I wanted to touch that. So, okay, the Chinese ink painting. Well, that's the concept of uh, the line of thought for Minato Isho ser series, all of us together series. So, People have thought that that was just spontaneous work, but that's not true. Maybe that's same with uh, uh, Kokubo-san, what you said. It's an instantaneous feeling of what you feel in front of the, the work. Yes, it's true. I'm sorry to be a genius. It's uh, sorry to be only right uh, hand wing, or right brain is another way of saying it that historical or social or society uh, based a thesis. I do have them. I try to work on these themes. But at the end of the day, it comes up to my mind as a, one of the art pieces that I would like to create. So that I'm following that instinct, I must say. Mm -hmm. So next time, maybe I could use the global economy as a theme, and I started, you know, um, reading the books about the global economy, and I ended up drawing this kind of picture. I think that's okay, but I don't normally do that kind of research by myself. In the case of manga, you have a kind of rough storyboards, and then you do the drafting first, and then you would finish up the manga. I'm not sure about your process, but uh, uh, do you normally do the freehand drawing? Does that mean that your process is very fast? No, my process is very slow. If you go to the uh, training school, I was very fast and I amazed people around me, but uh, from one point onward, uh, since I made a debut, my sketching process or my work process became very slow. It's like painting Japanese paints. In the case of Japanese modern painting, you do a lot of pre-drawing or sketching and then you will have a you know handmade carbon paper and then you will transcript on top. I'm not really good at those. You know, if I could, I would like to do the free hand writing. But I am a Japanese. I try not to be amongst the Western artists. You know, I respect the Japanese painting style to a certain level and uh, I found myself better at that kind of process and I started doing so uh, my process got very slow and that makes uh, Mizuma-san sad. Um, is that particularly so for a, a painting? Uh, for the drawing I think it depends on the size Whenever I draw girls, I feel more motivated, so I thought I could draw faster, but let's... Uh, in a case of Kanjin project painting, two days ago, uh, it was almost finished, 
but uh, I didn't like the face of one girl. She didn't look beautiful, so I started uh, modifying her face, but I'm not satisfied with what how she looks like now. But, uh, you know, I sometimes spend quite a lot of time, you know, modifying those, like, minor things. So I would like to turn to Ms. Asabuki. You have a lot of ink, I mean, inks on your left hand. Does that mean that you were just working on your painting until before you came here? Yes, I was drawing in the morning. I didn't stay overnight, but uh, I woke up early in the morning and I was drawing. Okay, uh, uh, let me ask this question. When I am writing a novel, I sometimes don't know when I can finish writing. In the case of painting and other art, pieces, uh, uh, I feel like there is no answer to a question. I think there, I, I don't see a clear end point, so I wonder how you see that. Just like a picture of waterfall, you said that the picture itself is not completed when it's installed in the exhibition uh, space. And like what you just said, you thought that uh, this uh, Kanjincho project painting was almost uh, complete two days ago. However, you came to realize that it's not really finished and you came to realize that you had to modify the face of one girl. And I wonder how you would put the period on your uh, work. To that question, I think there are certain kind of people who can answer in a profound manner that, for example, Giacometti, who's already passed away, you know, if you are talking to a re authentic painter, you know, they could answer to your question in more serious and profound manner. Uh, Giacometti is not an abstract painter. And I graduated from the oil paintings faculty in the 1980s. And everyone else were into abstract painting. And I also painted abstract at one point back then. But uh, at one point, I thought I should quit. And the major reason for that was because I never knew when I can uh, put my brush aside and I didn't know what I should be satisfied with. So if it's an uh, authentic painting, I think it's the core of the authentic painting, but uh, I, I couldn't help but run away out of that I thought that if I would paint the representational or realistic uh, painting, I could uh, more easily tell when to finish. It's like coloring. Uh, the object I thought back then, but in a case of paint of water fall, and as for the other paintings that are to be exhibited here, which I sometimes feel a little dull, sorry to say, but it's a combination of Western style and Japanese style. And it's not all about, you know, painting the blank space and, you know, it's not like there is a clear end point. It's same applies to the paint of water fall. When 
I was getting close to the finishing point, I would normally think that, okay, if I spend three more days, I could probably finish painting. But uh, after three days, I will think once again, I, I need to spend another three days, and that would, you know, go on and go on. So I still don't know where to finish. I think I am not able to kind of tell what would happen to myself, but I'm not sure, but I don't know, but I can't really tell when I can finish the painting. It's like a water, it is, I mean, I never painted, but it's like it, a water mirage or road mirage. When I am writing a book, I thought I'm doing a good job on one night, but in the following morning when I read what I wrote in the previous night once again, I sometimes feel quite dissatisfied or I sometimes feel that it's not what I wanted to write. And I thought that I am just following uh, my image, but uh, on later days I thought that I was just deviating from my main point. That happens to me quite often time. And in terms of the structure, composition, Let's say the posture and the location of a girl, once you decided you would face with another set of options or alternative selection of the composition or structure. So I feel like you have to spend forever just deciding on the framework of your paint. Does that happen to you? Well, there's a subject to this and uh, of course I tend to spend a lot of time on the subject but this uh, new work uh, featuring uh, young women, young girls, well uh, getting support from computer. I wanted to do something to overcome this hurdle and I'm in the midst of the uh, thinking that, in other words, uh, contour and the figures that I write on piece of a paper with a pencil, and I will scan that and utilizing Photoshop, a very simple uh, colored uh, distinction, and uh, you can expand and shrink, and you can turn it around and move around uh, and uh, with freedom, and those are the layers of the front to the back. And uh, that's only what I've known of, actually, is but many of you have this uh, picture in front of you. Kanjin Project, the seat, uh, there is a document, and they say Hanjin Project, uh, on the page two of that, uh, uh, 15,000 yen. Uh, on the right-hand side, you see the picture of two, yes, two girls, uh, as you can see, and when it's being finalized, uh, maybe over 50 girls is going to be features. So somebody, a girl in front, a girl in behind, and um, this could be talked about, but um, zombies. It's like many zombies are coming against you, and uh, you are going to kill all these zombies. It's like the intestine uh, hazard, that kind of image. It's a terrifying zombie, and they're all smiling, and they're all running towards you with a big smile, and they're nude. But um, it's a plastic type of uh, girls rather than actual living girls, and you are going to hit and target these uh, girls, and they will not bleed, but inside there are a lot of candies or strawberries or diamonds that comes out. It's like um, cracking a big sort of a ball uh, where you see in big advertisement and the, the limbs will all be sort of uh, dis dissected and the small strawberries uh, being a sort of 
splashing, and it's uh, very busy in a way. The finish of the artwork, and only I'm working only on these two young girls at the moment. I don't want to show this to the public. I should not say that, but I'm reluctant to. I'm not satisfied. Well, we have to have support from many people as possible. So when are we going to show this later? Okay, after this session. Okay. I'm reluctant to, but I should. Well, Miss uh, Mr. Kokubo, uh, maybe this is touch this touches your heart, doesn't it? Which part? Which part touches my heart? So young girls in nude. Okay, that part. It's like zombie uh, coming after you. I think that's misleading in a way if I say that that is a portion that touches my mind. Now, yes, I have had the chance to see. It's I saw a strawberry. Yes, many many strawberries. I hope. Oh, you had a chance to look at that painting? No. This is still a work in progress. Okay. It's. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to the finalization of this work. And as you say, in the past, you used to draw nipples and um, how do you call this? The inner world is unrelated, but the figure of a body, the physiques, the reality of the, the body of physiques of your mankind uh, was there as a reality. But you mentioned about plastic models, the, uh, the luster of the plain plastic uh, feeling of a doll. It's not fetish, but you said that um, this time you would like to feature girls' body as uh, being plastic. Yes, rather than being plastic, it's um, how you interpret it is up to you, but it's the world of games. It's the world of uh, data. And if you hit a person that is another round of you open up another round of data which you see splashing of strawberries in the surface it's um the very thin sort of texture of a skin close to being zero and it's just a thin layer of data it's like uh punching a balloon and bursting a balloon well Ms. Sasuke, you mentioned when are you put your brush down when are you going to end and declare the end to your work that's very difficult to do well, what's most time consuming is, let's say, you only have three days to your due date, but still you're not finished. You know, you know what the outcome will look like. Is it the detail? Is it the composition? You have the composition in your mind, and what takes you so long? Let's say this, uh, oh, no, no, not this one. Rather, well, the kanji project, uh, no, sorry, this ash color mountains, like this one. It's unfinished, in a way, but it is close to being finished. It's completed. So, in normal sense, if you look at it as one picture, you have to go two, three meters away from the work, otherwise you won't be able to see the whole picture. So for those distances, yes, so to those viewers, it's complete. But if you are mean and ill-natured and coming so close, how much meticulous detail has been written into each of the figures, then it's incomplete. Uh, you mentioned about the theory of fractals. The length of the coastal lines is uh, when you measure them, it's endless. It's a uh, fractal. Yes, uh, Japanese Archipelago by Lango, in terms of the length of the coastal line, when you measure them, there's uh, endless. If you would like to take that approach, it's endless. It's not complete. So the viewers, depending on the distance of the viewers, three meters away or two meters uh, close, so it depends upon where you will be able to be um, able to be satisfied. So how do you complete the work? Maybe you declare that your work is finished, that's it, or maybe you get bored. Yes, uh, sometimes I get bored, and yesterday I did too, and I got bored writing on that day, and I said, okay, this is finished for the day. Yes, I do kind I have that kind of ending as well. So the, the timing is now leading us to the third section, so maybe a comment or question, maybe to end the session. The mutant Hanako, at the end of the Mutant Hanako, there was a preface to the second phase. It seems as though that you're going to fight against the communism. When are you going to start on this work of the second story, the second series of this work? Well, it happens to me so often. It's a lie from the very beginning. Nothing is truth. I can do it maybe if I really try to. 
like Mao or Ho Chi Minh uh, City, and I could. But uh, uh, why should I uh, force myself to write the second series? I know it's going to be a failure, so maybe I will not write the second series. So yes, not only beautiful young women, but you said you're also intrigued in young boys as well. So there is a group called Sexy Zone, and uh, Mario is uh, Marius is a person that I would like to uh, recommend. He's singing in the center. He's uh, half between German and Chinese. He's a beautiful young boy, and he belongs to the Sexy Zone unit. Can you introduce him personally? No, I won't be able to personally introduce that gentleman to you, boy to you, but you can web search. Okay, thank you very much. Well, valuable comments. So, Ms. Asan, I guess no question, but uh, again, being given the opportunity to talk with you directly and being able to take part in this event and having you listen to answer many of these questions, it's humor. And every time you speak about the work, it always comes back to you in asking the same question to you. So in this manner, as we talk and speak, it uh, sort of uh, bring us to a place where we do not know what's the truth and what's not the truth. So I would like to be a viewer of the site called Lokopongi and being able to put in words. And by having the word being uttered, it brings back to you the same question. I would like to transcend from this world being able to seek uh, what is real for me. So that's something that I would like to expect out of this exhibition. Thank you very much. So uh, Ms. Kataoka and Mr. Aida, there will be a um, section to talk about the Heisei Kanjin project. So we'd like to end this uh, section. Me? As a genius, please end this section. Close the section. Wow. Thank you very much indeed. That will be my closing words. So having had the opportunity to listen as, in, as a part of the audience, three of you respectively, it was surprising to me that this is the perspective of I'm very happy about something good about Ida's work. So thank you very much for your good comments. Well then, thank you, Mr. Kokubo, thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Nameko san thank you. And Ms. Mariko Asabuki, thank you very much.